Australian Cup. So the trophy, it's a good one. Why wouldn't it be? The race has got such a history. So someone lucky enough in a few minutes time is going to get their hands around it. So a history that goes way, way back to 1861. The Australian Cup was first run in 1863, making the Flemington Autumn feature just two years younger than the Melbourne Cup. Originally for stayers over 3,600 metres, it was shortened to 2,000 metres in the 60s, where it became an autumn target for some of our most decorated middle distance weight for age horses, such as Octagonal, Long Row, yes, and Northerly. Northerly wins easily by Paulix. Fox Plate hero Bone Crusher and Vaux Rogue, a dual Australian Cup winner, squared off in an epic 1988 edition of the race, only to see a 125 to 1 long shot Dandy Andy cause one of the biggest boilovers in history. It's Dandy Andy racing after Vaux Rogue. Vaux Rogue stopping Dandy Andy. He's got him. Dandy Andy. Goodness gracious me, Dandy Andy. Bart Cummings proved to be a king of this cup as well, winning the race 13 times, including Saintly in 1996. Nothing like a Dane can't go on people on the slide for this year, but it's Saintly's Australian Cup. While another cup's icon, Maccabi Diva, left her mark on the Australian Cup, when in 2005 she broke the race record previously held by Northerly. Maccabi Diva's coming after winning Bell, 150 metres to go, and the Grand Mare raced up on the outside. Winning Bell fights back. Maccabi Diva. What a history, the great memories. And last year it was Jewess winning this race. It was a stunning victory for Edward Cummings and she really arrived, didn't she? She'd been a Queensland Oaks winner, but this was something else again. And then she wins the Tancred on that Monday and yet they're raced on the same day today. Couldn't do it today, of course. Not even Winx could manage that. But Jewess was able to win both of these races. So they have been so linked, these races. So the five horses that have won both of them, the first two are household names. Both two of the all-time greats, Octagonal Maccabi Diva. Managar had the purple patch. Preferment got this one on protest and then went and won the Tancred. He was a beauty. And Jewess, of course, had that wonderful, wonderful fortnight as well. Lizzie Cascadian, he's the class horse. He is, and he's trying to win a third career Group 1 today. Of course, he's probably the class, as you just mentioned, in the race. And he's, he's a little bit older. I thought, I, I, look, I don't think that he's completely out of it. Of course, he's a favourite. But I'm looking for some fresh legs in this race and some horses that are really in good form. But overall, his looks look fantastic, Bruce. Good summary. No, he's, he's to be reckoned with. Campionessa, you mentioned prowess a moment ago. Em. So, Opie comes to ride. How good is she? She's good. She's met sharp and smart and prowess at her past two starts. She's finished a very game second to both of them. Uh, and she's tough. She's a lovely big mare and she's been racing in, in career best form. So it's very hard not to make a case for her in what is not necessarily a particularly deep Australian cut. God, what a weekend for New Zealand already. That This would absolutely top it off. Um, the 2,000 metres. The, I think of the 2,000 metres at Flemington, I think of the McKinnon Stakes, which is now the Champion Stakes in the spring, and the Australian Cup. It's just a beautiful circuit for a great weight for age race, isn't it? It is, absolutely. And we were talking earlier, weren't we, about the fact that it's, it's constantly turning, yeah. isn't it? Which is something quite different. And as we get around to that uh, home straight, it's a long way home, isn't it? And Em, you've actually ridden on this home straight, you know, when you, with Murray Baker and, that, and looking after those great horses, haven't you? Yeah, I was lucky enough. Just a, a little course proper gallop, nothing like uh, riding in a race, but it's a long way round there. I tell you, you need to be fit. <laughs> and what does a straight feel like when you're doing that? Very long. I was hanging out for the winning post uh, but no it's iconic isn't it it's galloping up that straight there as you get close to the big grandstand it's wonderful and someone this afternoon is going to take out those group one honors right at that uh, winning post and could any racetrack be in a better spot and have a look at the, the great city of melbourne so close and the wonderful grandstands and a terrific atmosphere here as we come into the mounting yard for the 161st running of the australian cup 
He's such an honourable horse, Cascadian, a dual group one winner, and I think he's just about as good as he's ever been. Yeah, absolutely. It was a barnstorming run in the All-Star Mile last week. I guess he does have to back up from that tough run last week, but he is the proven weight for age performer in this uh, event. And he's handled the backup previously, which is a plus. Last time he raced over the 2,000 metres, he was actually a winner of the Hill Stakes. Regal Power actually ran second in this race uh, back in 2020. He's not going as well. He's lost his way a bit. Uh, he's at long, long odds. He's won four and a half million. He's been a dual group one winner in Western Australia. He's won an all-star mile. I mean, it, it's a CV to die for, but it would be a big surprise if he were to win. Not this bloke, non-conformist. I really like the chances of non-conformist. He resumed over the mile in the blamey. He paid double figures and won pretty comfortably. Uh, second up form is pretty average. Five starts for only one finish in the money. He probably didn't beat much in the blamey, but this isn't a particularly strong group one anyway. He's a 50% strike rate. He's got a good win rate, and I think he can improve nicely. I reckon Mike Moroni would have been tempted to go to the tanker with Emissary because he was second in the Melbourne Cup, won a Geelong Cup. It keeps him at the 2,000. He does. He's making good progress, this crap, I felt. Posted that placing in the Melbourne Cup last spring. Last start was in the Australian Cup Prelude, made good ground from back in the field. Probably just peaked on his run, but uh, should be better again for that second up run. Richo, oh, no, I'm going to you, Lizzie. Smoking Romans wins a Turnbull over this trip 2,000 metres. If he does that, he's a chance. Yeah, absolutely. Track and distance specialist, isn't he? After just having the one go at the same track and distance. And looking at the way that he presents, he's probably not going as well as he has done. He does take a little bit of time to get towards his peak fitness. He is quite a gross horse. So you expect him to be peaking today, but I would have I would have wanted a little bit more from him thus far, Richard. Yeah, fair call, but I think this guy can run really well. Yamiri and coming through the Peter Young, and we've seen the history of the Australian Cup. Coming through the Peter Young slash St George Stakes is the key lead up form. Thought he ran quite well in that. Uh, second up today, 2,000 metres at Flemington is picture perfect for him. If you think of that, McKinnon, he's a shocker, has got a big chance. Yes, has. The latest run was uh, fresh up in the blamey over the mile, up to 2,000 suits, much better here. He'd like to see this will settle a few spots closer from a much better draw this time. Maybe uh, potentially better with a little bit of uh, rain around, but obviously won't get that today. Richo Pounding's been up for a while, but boy, he's been racing well, hasn't he? Well, the Moody-Nolan combination. I hope that uh, the old Managar uh, special sources can uh, repeat. But, look, it was a good run in the All-Star Mile. That's what the All-Star Mile being a week before is all about, to try to get them to run in the Australian Cup. We understand that, and they'll be two weeks away, but, gee, this would be a stretch, wouldn't it? Whereas I think, Lizzie, Luna Flair can run well, even though she's not a weight for age horse, we know that, but she is a good 2,000-metre-plus horse. She is a good 2,000 metre plus horse and if she gets a nice run where she's able to be cuddled up and they can just let her have one last dash at them, she's going to be extremely competitive in a very open race when you get away from the top few in the market. It's good to have the Oaks winner in the field, El Patroness. She's probably struggling for her very best form but Bruce the Winkers go on today. And Danny O'Brien gave us some sort of a chance. We spoke to him earlier. He stayed here of course and those other horses are racing up in... Uh, in um, Sydney. Steinem, uh, I thought she was outstanding. Yeah, she was. I had some supporters last start and the Peter Young and most definitely delivered. That was on the 25th of February, so been back to the trials since in just a handful of tries has run really well over the 2,000 metres previously. Bank more. Uh, the Alistair Clark, I mean, same sort of trip, I mean, three-year-old. Yeah, an interesting move, isn't it, targeting this race so soon after the Alistair Clark. Has been racing well prior to that, uh, just got too far back in that Australian Guineas. Had the run of the race in the Alistair Clark and scored pretty comfortably. That was his first try over the 2,000 metres takes on the older horses here. Virtual Circle, I guess, in a similar boat. I mean, he didn't miss that other club, but he, he ran OK. He was, uh, suffered some interference in the Australian Guineas. He's always been promising. He ran very well in the Vars last time. And we get to 17 here in Yafford, who was second in the South Australian Derby. Going back a bit now, he's been in races that he probably couldn't win, and the book bookmakers or the price would suggest that this is another one. So it's a big throw at the... Stumps and here's Campionessa. Yeah, Campionessa, she's a tough mare, so no surprise to see her a little bit uh, jig joggy in the parade. She's been up for a while, she's rock hard fit, she's the last start place getter at 2,000 metre weight for age, so she has a nice chance in this. And Bear Story would shock, that is for sure and certain. Uh, Daisy, points bet. The market for the all important Australian Cup.
Thank James you. Cummings has joined us. James, you've had a bit of a day, I believe, is that right, with, with travel? Yeah, it's uh, been a little sticky getting here from the airport, but uh, I did meet Eddie Jones today, so oh. I told him to knock those wallabies into shape, <laughs> and, uh, and hopefully that's a good omen for the, uh, for the Australian Cup this afternoon. Two great trainers together. Um, he's a marvel. Uh, his run was phenomenal last week. Yeah, didn't he run well? And uh, third up over 2,000 last prep, he was enormous. But the thing is, right in, in the lead up to the All-Star Mile, he was just flying in his track work, and we were pretty bullish about him running a race, disappointed by the barrier. Uh, but he was able to get the runs he required to get into the top three and even gave the winner a little bit of a scare, Mr Brightside, inside the last 90 metres when he got into the clear. Um, up to 2,000 today is, uh, is better for Cascadian and he seems to have had a really good week at Flemington. Uh, the guys at Carbine Lodge are delighted with the way he's in the skin and, uh, and the way he's been eating up each night. So uh, they're the indicators for the seven-day backup to be uh, successful. Uh, and, uh, and meanwhile, uh, the beauty about the ride for Ben Mellum is that it needs to be the right of the day to win because Cascadian has to be weaving through them and filling the gaps. And if his baldy face can sniff a gap and he's going quicker than the gap's going, he can win this Australian Cup. So you expect to see him well back as normal? Yeah, well, look, I don't think there's any... Uh, I don't think there's any reality... You know, there's no real reality that Cascadian's going to win the, win the jump. So, you know, Ben just needs to take his med medicine early and, uh, and, and, and look for the gaps. Ride the horse quiet, which is his pattern. And, and whilst all the scratchings in the race have sucked a lot of the, 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 the race tempo out, uh, there are a few that want to be closer. Um, um, he's a shocker, was announced to just change the tactics. And the imported horse, a few of these horses that are second up will be into the race a little sooner and a little earlier. So there's a little bit of extra tempo might be injected by everyone else observing there's no pace in the race. And I'm sure you've noticed the stake money's gone from 1.5 to 3 million. We noticed. Good on you, mate. All the best. Thanks, Bruce. We'll get that marker mover from New Daisy. Thank you, Maka. The market mover for the big one is the toppy Cascadian. The points bet punters cannot get enough of this runner now. And Campion Essa, well, this has been a really good mare's race in the past. 23 mares have won it, the latest being Jewess. So I think that she's also going to run well in that hot New Zealand form, Bruce. I'm just getting worried. I don't know how excited Emily gets when Opie hits the front with about 100 metres to go in. Um, <laughs> You'll be safe. You'll be fine, Bruce. It's OK. OK, we're about to find out. It's a very, very good field. It's got a great history. There's a lot of money at stake. It's the Australian Cup. Here's Matt Hill. At the 2000, and they're racing. Virtuous circle away only fairly towards the inner. Spoken Romans jumped well with Numerian and Bankmore. He's a shocker behind those horses. Then came out wider Steinem with also pounding between horses, getting to about sixth. Bear Story, the bolter on the improved. Nonconformist at this stage is about three and four deep. Then Campionessa outside of Virtuous Circle at the 1600. Two links, El Patroness, Cascadian, Regal Power, well back, and then Yaffet. Luna Flair and a couple of links, Emissary from the wide gate drifts back to the end. 1400 metres to run. New Mary in the leader. Three quarters of a length to Smoke and Romans. Bear Story on a limb in that group of horses. Bank more outside of He's a Shocker. A length and a quarter, nonconformist, three wider around pounding and virtuous circle then came Steinem as they run past the 1200 metres, a length away midfield, then Campionessa Regal Power, El Patronessa, a length Cascadian, then Yaffet, Luna Flair and two and a half to Emissary 
a thousand meters to go and Bear Story keeps the pressure on out three wide outside of New Mary and Smoke and Roman snicks back a length off those then Bankmore he's a shocker a length and a half non-conformist outside of Pounding and then Steinem and Virtuous Circle three quarters of a length Campionessa slap bang in the middle of the field would spot the lead about seven or eight from El Patroness then came Regal Power at the 600 meters Emissary is getting a wriggle on Cascadian back to third last then Yafford and Luna Flair around the turn at the 500 New Mary and Bear Story Smoke and Romans three wide then came Bankmore who makes a line of four he's a shocker trying for a run behind those horses Campionessa is coming through and Pounding got a run as well New Marion at the 250 led by a link Smoke and Romans he's a shocker Pounding Campionessa and non-conformist New Marion at the 150 Pounding is picking it back and Cascadian late here's Cascadian right over the top of them up to New Marion Cascadian it's the Cummings name again in the Australian Cup over the top of New Marion Pounding third photo fourth Smoke and Romans he's a shocker then Campionessa behind those El Patroness and Luna Flair virtuous circle non-conformist back behind them Steinem Bear Story Bankmore towards the end Yaffet Regal Power and Emissary towards the end well didn't James Cummings sum it up absolutely perfectly James you summed it up absolutely perfectly it was just as it happened and his turn of foot was sensational at the end wasn't it oh you know good on Ben Mellon he, uh, he, he, st he stuck to the plan uh, he rode the horse with such confidence but uh, I love the fact that he followed Campionessa who looked a picture in the yard she'd run a second at Prow West who just bolted in the binary he, he had non-conformists up there ahead of him a little to the right and Steinem was up on his outside and the race was almost beginning to be over for the horse when runs were shutting but he stuck that little baldy faced head through and he was the baldy faced assassin the last 150 and he's claimed the race and oh, we're terribly excited for Cascadian because he's a, he's a real favourite of ours in the stable and he deserves a, a, another big group one um, he, he, uh, he's, a, he's a wonderful horse and he's a credit to his highness Sheikh Mohammed to be winning a, a, a big weight for age race on a, on, a, on a big day in Melbourne at Flemington and, uh, and, and I'm just so proud of the entire team. You, you should be and your brother last year, and your grandfather 13 times, but Edward last year, it's just great, isn't it? Oh, it is great, and, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm privileged as a, as a young Cummings to be here on the big stage to have competitors in races like these, but you know, I had a very stern meeting with my brother Edward yesterday and talked to him about how we might, uh, I might be able to go, go about winning this, and he said, the conclusion of it, he said, well, you go and win it this year, and I'll be back to win it next year. We're in these races, and uh, and we've got the teams behind us to, uh, to be competitive, but he's a, look, he, He's a great horse, Cascadian. He's now a Doncaster winner, an all-age stakes winner, and, uh, and, he, and, he, and he pops the Australian Cup on his mantle. And eight, $8.2 million, it's quite remarkable. What do you do, James? I mean, I, I mean, you enjoy the moment, but there is a Queen Elizabeth worth $5 million. You've got Animo, of course, and it's going to be so hot. There are maybe... A, is there anything else for him? Well, you know, I, I suppose I could run the horse in three weeks in the all-age, and he's so adaptable, yep. he'd run well. But that is looking like one of the races of the carnival. I, um, I, don't, I don't mind the idea of laying away in the Queen Elizabeth and...